Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back again today with another fantasy football video. This video is week five tight end rankings. Now before I go through the tight ends one through 20 in my rankings this week, I'd like to give you guys a word for my sponsor, Overlay DFS. Great friends of mine, great website. I play on it every single week and I think you guys should join me play the role here. Tired of having to pick the perfect player at every single position in order to win at Salary Cap DFS? Are you tired of having your Salary Cap lineup out of the running to win money in the first five minutes? Does playing Salary Cap DFS feel like a job and not even a game? Want a fantasy game where pros with 150 lineups and computer-generated games can't dominate? OverlayDFS.com has a new revolutionary start sit game for fantasy sports. They are the home of the single entry GPP. How do you play? It is a simple start sit format. Make 12 start sit decisions from the 30 plus matchup presented, like you can see on my screen right now. A winner, lo or win, loss, or tie will be awarded to your overall record for each decision. Records of the top 10% of users win 9 times your buy in. 12 and 0 records win GTD progressive bonus. All matchups are player versus player who will have the most fantasy points. Usually, an 8 and 4 record is good enough to get that cash. Sometimes 7 and 5, other times 9 and 3, depending on on the week make 12 picks on the matchup options listed for example in week five it could be cooper cup versus todd Gurley, adam Thielen versus stefan diggs carson wentz versus tom brady and many many more the object is to stay consistent and finish in the top 10 percent of the field to win nine times your buy-in until the stars align and you go that beautiful 12 and 0 right now if you go the perfect 12 and 0 in the 109 dollar game you'd win the progressive bonus of over 26 big once $26,000. They have buy-ins at all levels. If no one hits that perfect 12 and oh, the progressive bonus keeps growing. It will roll over until it gets hit. It's like the super contest, but for DFS, do not get shut out. Visit www.overlaydfs.com today. And we are bike week five tight end rankings. Number one we have coming in at number one is Travis Kelsey going up in a favorable favorable matchup against the Indianapolis Colts. Now, Travis Kelsey has not been producing like we thought he would. His friends, Mark Andrews, Darren Waller, all seem to be producing better than him, but I think that Travis Kelsey is in for a big week this week against the Colts. Like I said, I believe it's going to be a high-scoring matchup, and not ranking the best tight end in the game at number one in a favorable matchup is, in my opinion, foolish. At number two, we have George Kittle, who has also been disappointing a lot of fantasy football owners. George Kittle got up against Cleveland this week. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be peppering him with those targets like his name is goddamn Salt Bay, and he's going to be able to have a pretty successful week against the Cleveland Browns, who have not been the greatest at defending that tight end. At number three, we have Evan and Graham. Evan Ingram going up against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, Evan Ingram has been very solid. Daniel Jones definitely likes targeting Evan Ingram. Now, with Golden Tate coming back, that could be something that may get in Evan Ingram's way of scoring a touchdown. But Evan Ingram is a huge body. He's going to be able to get those passes in the end zone. You do have to somewhat temper your expectations because he is playing up against the Vikings. But I still think Evan Ingram is in for a pretty beast game this week. And number four, we have Zach Ertz going up against the New York Football Jets. Now, the Jets' defense is eviscerated. It is terrible. He is going to peace. Carson Wentz is going to peace straight through them. Zach Ertz hasn't also been producing all that well. Both Kel all Kelsey, Kittle, and Ertz, the first three tight ends off the boarding or fantasy football draft, have been disappointing. But this week against the Jets, I would bet that Zach Ertz ends up crossing that plane and scoring that beautiful touchdown that you've been waiting all year for. And number five, we have Mark Andrews going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, every week, Mark Andrews has been showing up on that injury report. Is Mark Andrews going to play this, that, the other thing? Right now, it seems like he's healthy and he is going to be good to go. I'm confident in him this week against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mark Andrews is one of Lamar Jackson's favorite targets, especially near the red zone. I think he's in for another 100-yard game and a touchdown. I really like Mark Andrews this week. And number six, we have Austin Hooper, the late round dream going up against the Houston Texans. Austin Hooper has been a huge, huge, huge target for Mr. Matty Ice this year. Austin Hooper has been producing, especially 
well in the red zone. I think that against the Houston Texans defense that has not been all that phenomenal this year, Matt Ryan and Austin Hooper with the great connection will be able to put up a solid game this week. And number seven, we have Darren Waller going up against the Chicago Bears. Now, typically, Darren Waller would be ranked higher than seven, but he is playing up against the Chicago Bears. And even though he's on the field for about 100% of the fucking snaps, Darren Waller is playing against the Bears defense, so I am worried about that. But I still think that he's going to be getting enough targets to make him useful this week. Knock one time if you're with me. At number eight, we have G Reg, third leg Olsen going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, the Jaguars are without Jalen Ramsey. Now, George, I mean, uh, Greg Olson does not have to worry about Jalen Ramsey because he's not a wide receiver, but he is going to get a lot of targets. Clearly, Kyle Allen likes targeting him, whether it's Kyle Allen or Cam. Obviously, it's not going to be Cam. Greg Olson is still useful. Now, he is one of those guys who could just break his leg at any point in the game. Greg Olson is one of those injury-prone players. Obviously, we hope for no injury. Knock on wood if you're with me. You know what I'm saying? But Greg Olson should be fine this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, at number nine, we have Eric Ebron, ranked pretty high because he's going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Jacoby Brissett seemed to be peppering those tight ends with targets last week. Now, Eric Ebron ended up catching the ball just two times. He scored that touchdown, though. Looked great at the end of the game. I think this week against the Kansas City Chiefs, he may be able to hop in that end zone again, and that's why he's ranked so highly. At number 10, we have Delaney Walker going up against the Buffalo Bills. Now, the Buffalo Bills have a great, great defense, but Delaney Walker is going to knock down that great wall and have a productive game this week. We know Marcus Mariota likes targeting Delaney Walker, A.J. Brown, all those other folks. Corey Davis probably won't have a good game like we saw last week, and I think the real good game is going to be from Delaney Walker. Now, number 11, we have Tyler Eifert going up against the Arizona Cardinals. Now, Tyler Eifert isn't a guy I love every single week, but the Arizona Cardinals defense has been terrible at defending that tight end position. Tyler Eifert is in for a huge game this week. I think he's going to be able to cross that end zone, be able to get potentially over 60, 70 yards, catch a bunch of passes, be wide open in the middle of the field. I like Tyler Eifert this week. Throw it back to 2015. Tyler Eifert is going to be great this week. At number 12, we have Jimmy Graham going up against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Jimmy Graham, week one, great. And then week two and week three, goose egg. Week four, pretty good. Without Devontae Adams, I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to rely more on Jimmy Graham, potentially in the red zone. I really like Jimmy Graham this week against the Dallas Cowboys. Now, you may be disappointed in him if he doesn't score that touchdown, but I don't think this is one of those weeks where he puts up that goose egg. At number 13, we have Jason Witten, the tight end, as well in that game, going up against the Packers. Now, Dak Prescott seems to actually really like targeting Jason Witten, not just in the red zone. We saw it last week. While they're going towards midfield, he's passing the ball to Jason Witten. Was that because Dak was playing scared against New Orleans? Maybe. But I think against the Green Bay, Jason Witten will get enough work to quantify him being the number 13 tight end of the week. And number 14, we have O.J. Howard. Now, O.J. Howard is going up against the New Orleans Saints. And I hate, hate, hate starting O.J. Howard. I can't stand the guy. Fucking, I don't know if Jameis is ever going to target him, but I feel like this is a matchup where he could benefit. We saw Witten benefit last week from it. I think this week, O.J. Howard could be in for an okay game. At number 15, we have the other tight end on the Indianapolis Colts, Jack Doyle, going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, last week, we saw Jack Doyle get fucking smashed like a goddamn truck straight into the ground. But I think at the end of the day, Jack Doyle, he's fine. He's fine. I thought he was concussed. I thought he may be dead on the field, but he got right back up and he's fine. Somehow, and I think against the Chiefs, if T.Y. Hilton's out, this is going to be a sneaky, amazing start for Jack Doyle. At number 16, we have Dawson Knox, Buffalo Bills, tight end. Dawson Knox, one time if you're with me. Guard up against the Tennessee Titans. Now, we know the Titans defense is good, but it seems like whether it's Josh Allen or Matt Barkley, Dawson Knox will be heavily involved in the game, getting a lot of snaps on the offense. At number 17, we have Jared Cook. Now, Jared Cook has fooled me once. Shame on me. Fool me twice. Fucking fool me again. Fool me three times. And now it's just done. I don't want anything to do with Jared Cook. He's fooled me. What week? We're week fucking five. He's fooled me four times in a row. He has bamboozled me, just like Kirk Cousins has bamboozled Minnesota. This is unbelievable. Jared Cook has been god-awful. If he does not produce against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
this is the week where he should be good, but he's ranked so low because of how inconsistent he has been. There's no consistency to even be had because the ball isn't even going towards him. At number 18, we have Trey Burton going up against the Oakland Raiders. Now, if there's any time Trey Burton could get it done, it would be this week against the Raiders. The Raiders' defense has not looked good. Trey Burton looks better with Chase Daniels in the game. Mitch Trubisky is legally blind and can't throw to anyone whose name isn't Allen Robinson or Taylor Gabriel in that one game against the Redskins. I think that Trey Burton is in for a pretty okay game this week. And at number 19, we have Mr. RSJ. Ricky Dicky Seals Jones going up against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, last week, Ricky Seals Jones hoobity hoobity hopped straight into the goddamn end zone. And scored last week against the Ravens. I think this week he could be in for potentially scoring a touchdown. And that's why he's ranked 19. Now rank 17, or even 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. You probably don't want to start any of these guys. But the final guy, number 20, Noah Fant of the Denver Broncos going against the LA Chargers. Now Joe Flacco has not... Looked all that bad, if I'm being completely honest, but the Chargers defense is good, but I think Noah Fant will still be able to get enough passes thrown his way that you won't want to throw yourself out the window after you see Noah Fant's points production after the game. So thank you guys all for watching this video. If at any point you enjoyed, click that subscribe button. If at any point you disliked the video, click the dislike button. It doesn't matter to me. And leave a comment down below. Tell me about anything. Tell me about how your day is going. Tell me about your life. Tell me about everything. I always respond. Have a great rest of your guys' day. I love each and every one of you. We are now at 2,200 subscribers. We're going to hit 3,000. We're going to hit the goddamn fucking moon. I love you all. Goodbye.